Great to see you. I'm John Bradshaw from It Is Written, hoping that your day has got off to a great start. I have a question for you. As you plan your day, as you look ahead, maybe as you plan your life, as you look even further ahead, what do you hope to accomplish today? Uh, Think about that. What do you hope to accomplish today? Planning to fail? No. Planning on making a mess of something? No. You, You have a project that you would like to see collapse? No, of course not. So I'll broaden this. Where are you going in life? Where are you going in life? You have a career mapped out. You have a career that you're in the midst of. You've got a a job to do, kids to raise, grandchildren to look out for, uh, pursuits to to chase down. Sure. You're planning on being a success, right, on some level. You're not saving for a mortgage in the hope that you don't make it. You're not investing in the hopes that they collapse. You're not uh, taking voice lessons in the hope that you sing off-key. No, you didn't join an organization so you could be overlooked and ignored. You didn't get a job at this firm so you could always stay on the bottom rung of the ladder. What is it we're hoping for? We're hoping for success on some level. We want to do well. For a Christian believer, that honors and glorifies God when our talents are used and uh, maybe his abilities are seen through us or he develops something in us that can be a blessing to others. Success is good. But success is a double-edged sword because success can, well, it has the capacity to cause you to forget all about the one who gave you success. You've met people like that. They started off a certain kind of individual. They got success and it just changed them. It might have ruined them. Maybe they started running with a different crowd. Maybe they became egotistical. Maybe wealth sometimes can really change a person. Well, I'm not suggesting that wealth is bad. No, the Bible doesn't say anything about wealth being bad. It does say the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, but it does not say that wealth is inherently bad. David, Abraham, Solomon, and and so on, tremendously wealthy. So wealth isn't bad, but you know, it can change people. You set out to make a million dollars and a million's not enough, and then it's two, and then it's 10, and then it's a hundred. And before long, you aren't the same person. Doesn't mean it has to be that way but it can be that way. So as we're chasing success, as we're looking to achieve, as we're looking to attain, we want to keep this in perspective. And keep in mind that doing well doesn't always work out well. I'm going to give you a Bible story that teaches this. And then, of course, the solution to this kind of challenge. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 5 And speaking of a gentleman named Uzziah, he's also called Azariah in the Bible, King Uzziah. He sought God in the days of Zechariah. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. You got that right. He prospered as long as he sought the Lord. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines. And he broke down the wall of Gath, the wall of Jabna, the wall of Ashdod. He built cities among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines. Verse 8, the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah. His name spread abroad even to the entering in of Egypt, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. You've got to love the language. Making a point here, he didn't just strengthen himself, but he really strengthened himself. Exceedingly is the word used. We go on and read that Isaiah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. And he built towers in the desert and dug many wells. He had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains and so on. It says he loved husbandry. He loved agriculture is what he loved. He loved loved the soil. He had a host of fighting men that went out to war by band, massive army and a great army. Under their hand was an army, 307,500. This guy did well. He prepared for them shields and spears and helmets and all of that. He made engines invented by cunning men, talented men, to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks, to shoot arrows and great stones. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. This was the man you wanted to be your king. He was the epitome of success. Whatever he turned his hand to, it prospered. He did well, King Isaiah. I said a couple of moments ago that success can be a double-edged sword. Success can, if you allow it, lead you away from your foundation. It can turn you into somebody that you really never were. The Bible says that about Isaiah. 
This is 16 of 2 Chronicles 25. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. He did something he really wasn't supposed to do. Eighty priests remonstrated with him. You've got no business doing that. Get out of the temple, they said. And as he left, he was afflicted with leprosy. God had to signal that the king was out of line. The king became very presumptuous, didn't he? So much success just went to his head. So what do we do then about success? Do we worry when our children or grandchildren say they've been accepted to medical school or just, they just passed their bar exams and they're ready to practice as lawyers? No, 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 we don't worry. We pray, but we don't worry. We want success. If your uh, investments did really well, your 401k is just thriving. That's great. That's what you wanted. But when we allow our strength and our success to lead us away from God, it's happened so many times, it might even be happening to you. At that stage, you've got to say, wait a minute. Let's do a little moral inventory. Let's, let's check on this. We want to do right, not wrong. We want to do well, but we don't want well to be unwell. Interesting little story in the Bible where the apostle Paul is afflicted with something that he refers to as a thorn in the flesh. And he prayed three times that God would remove it. But God did not. He said to me, God speaking now, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Then Paul said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. God doesn't ask you for strength. He asks you for weakness because that's all you've got to give. But when you give God your weakness, what do we just read in the Bible? God's strength is made perfect in weakness. So if you're looking out at your day and you're saying, I don't know how I'm going to get through. Oh, you do now because Isaiah wrote that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's how you're going to get through by remembering your weakness, not by pretending you're strong. Don't, don't lie to God and tell God you've got it all together. Confess to God, and this is an honest conversation, God, I need you today. I need you to be my strength. I need you to, 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 to be the center of my existence. I need you to, to guide me, be my wisdom. You can be as successful as you want. Better to be as successful as God wants and lean on him in your success in your triumphs, in your victories, lean on God. You don't want to do like King Uzziah and allow your strength to turn you away from the one who made you strong. Have a great day today. And as you go about your day, remember God is with you. He's your strength. Jesus is your Lord. God will provide all of the grace and wisdom and righteousness that you need. Lean on God today. That's success.